Pinocchio, more like Pin Pinwokio. Oh, that's actually quite good. <laughs> We found a title. Yes, it would appear that the new live action Pinocchio film has not been met with the warmest of receptions. Bruh. Emotional damage. Some have even gone as far to say as they prefer the Russian <laughs> Pinocchio. And if you've, whew, if you've never seen that, I mean, consider yourself lucky. Father, when can I leave to be on my own? I've got the whole world to see. You are father. When can I leave to be on my own? <laughs> I still get flashbacks, man. You know, I miss the good old days when films used to just be like an hour to an hour and a half long. Now, these days, everything is so self-indulgent. Every single film is like three hours plus. And it's like, ah, you, yeah, you might be thinking, oh, but Johnny, you love the extended cuts of The Lord of the Rings. That's about three years long. Yeah, but that warrants the screen time. Pinocchio, two hours, Pinocchio. I mean, the original, the 1940 animation, is a classic. They've managed to add an extra 30 minutes onto a classic. 30 minutes of improvements, I'm, I'm sure. And the movie starts with our little friend, Jiminy Cricket, of course, and straight up, the dude looks like a little green nutsack. He looks like a little green testicle sat on top of a tiny human body. Now, I'm sure you're all aware of the concept of breaking the fourth wall, but this somehow manages to break the fourth dimension. Now allow me to explain. It starts with Jiminy narrating the movie. We're gonna call him Future Jiminy because he's narrating himself in the past. Nothing weird about that. But the only thing is, past Jiminy can hear Future Jiminy and Future Jiminy can interact with past Jiminy. Hey, who's telling this story? Me or you? Well, who are you? Well, I'm you, only older and wiser. But to past Jiminy, Future Jiminy is just a disembodied voice. So. Essentially, future Jiminy is past Jiminy's conscience talking to him from the future. So, you might be thinking, well, why doesn't future Jiminy just warn past Jiminy what's about to happen and no one has to worry about anything? But then, if he did that, would future Jiminy then cease to exist? I mean, is any of this making sense? So, Jiminy heads to Geppetto's workshop, and I hadn't really thought about this when uh, I was a kid or any time uh, I've watched this film, but all those clocks on the wall. To quote Kanye West, that right there would drive a sane man berserk. No wonder he thinks a piece of wood's talking to him, the crazy ass fool. He's been subjecting himself to like this crazy chrono based torture. Geppetto, my boy, you need to get the hell out of the workshop and go get you a job with the CCP. They're gonna enjoy your modem operandi. They are gonna like the way you proceed, my friend. We're talking sweet, sweet red, my brother. Yo, you ever been so cold that you just wanna like bake your own anus? Maybe something here. <laughs> yeah, me too, boy. Now, the opening to this film is nothing short of tragic because essentially what we're doing is we're watching a little green sentient testicle watch an old man have a legitimate mental breakdown. So, Geppetto's son has passed away for unknown reasons. Uh, so, he's, he's, bu he's built a wooden rendition of his son that he's now been singing to for the past five minutes. Uh, there's no, there's no joke to be made about that. It's literally just a grieving father singing to a plank of wood. But uh, if I had to guess how his son passed away, I'd say it's uh, probably a drip overdose. So Geppetto, I mean Geppetto, has a cuckoo clock shop, but there's a catch, you see, because none of these clocks are for sale. Senora, I'm very sorry, but I cannot sell you any of my cuckoo clocks. But if you cannot sell your clocks, why do you have a shop? It's complicated. This man is legitimately insane. He's completely bananas. He's lost every single last one of his marbles. How does he make money? Oh. They just don't understand, do they, Cleo? Your last fish got me acting up, bruh. Now, I legitimately feel sorry for whoever had to uh, animate and rotoscope the cat because it is that is some of the most tedious animation work you can do. But uh, unfortunately, Figaro is looking a bit more like Slither.io. I made them for my beloved Costanza, but, but, but never as much. Would you look at that? It looked like Geppetto's taken my advice after all, and he's now practicing for his new job role with the Chinese government. What is your name? <laughs> you should have a name of your own.
And just when we think that Geppetto couldn't possibly dive any deeper into mental turmoil. Pinocchio? Yes, yes. <laughs> is it, is it girl? Do you love the name Pinocchio? Yes, yes. This poor man needs so much therapy. Oh. <laughs> oh, look, at, look at Pinocchio there in the moonlight. He looks almost like a real boy. Yeah, oh, he, he, he looks lovely. If I woke up and saw that, I'd start swinging the nearest blunt object. Now, this is definitely one of those times where if you change the, the music in the background, it completely changes the genre of the film. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the original clip back again. Then I'm going to play that same clip again, but I'm going to change the music. Yeah, this one also has a talking seagull. Uh, I'm not sure what that's about. I mean, I'll admit it's been a minute since I watched the original, but... I don't remember a talking seagull. This is uh, this is just an insight into some of the uh, creative decisions that are going on behind the scenes on this film. Ah, I have some very good goblins for you. Ah, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I swear I I didn't edit that in any way. That is that's just in the film. There you go. Pinocchio, the perfect name for a boy with a wooden head. I'm a boy. Uh, well. A very good question. You better be careful what you say now, you big blue bigot. If Geppetto wanted a real boy, why would he carve a puppet? Well, sure, there are other ways to make a boy, but I don't think Geppetto gets out much, and I guess it's the best he could do with the tools he's got. God damn, Jiminy, chill out, bruh. The, the man's son's died and he's replaced him with a plank and you're calling him an incel? Gee, you savage little nutsack. I just happened to pause the film at this moment uh, and just wanted to share it with you. I need help to walk, but I will... Okay, that, that was a bad time to pause. I did want to talk briefly about the story arc that they've added to the film. So they've, uh, they've added a new original sort of main character-ish, and she happens to be a disabled woman of colour. And I've got no problem with that, but what I do have a problem with is it's just a, it just it feels forced. And it's like, they've had to shoehorn her in by adding to the original story. None of this was in the original Pinocchio. And if that was my culture being represented, I feel like I'd feel, I'd be more pissed than happy that I'm being represented. Because I'd feel like, why can't I be part of the original story like everyone else? Why can't you just let me be involved with what it already is? Why do you have to find this new thing to just to add me in? Why, why do I have to be a side dish? You know what I mean? And then they've also added a new song for this character, which is there just to pad out time. It doesn't progress the plot in any way. And then they begin to tease that she's going to be the one to save Pinocchio from Stromboli because he's locked him in a cage. But then she doesn't for for whatever reason. It's because in the original Pinocchio, you know, Jiminy finds him, then the blue fairy appears. Pinocchio lies to her about what's been going on. And then through learning to be honest, the fairy then chooses to help him out. Whereas in this one, they've completely kind of flipped it and the blue, the blue fairy doesn't come at all. And instead he learns that by lying, it can sometimes help him because he lies to make his nose purposely grow so he, they can reach the key to save him. And like, it's, it's very small and, 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 and I guess it, it maybe doesn't mean a lot, but like they've, they've completely flipped the meaning of that scene. Instead of learning to be honest, like, he's just learned to apologize for when he's not been honest. And I mean, it's like I say, I, I'm nitpicking, but it's just bad writing, dude. <laughs> hey, look, they added shadow monsters to Pinocchio. They added shadow monsters to Pinocchio. And as always, a big shout out to the patrons and the channel members. We've got the tier two Giga Chards. We've got Steve the Goat, Pos One, and Saeed. Then we've got the tier one patrons. It's Abe Froman, Sammy Moraine, Brennus, Damon Spike, Chloe Bond, Lord Claret, Brett Leafers, and Arkham Spider. And then, of course, the channel members, Kuno Sacco and Yon Witch. And don't forget, anyone who becomes a patron or a channel member by the end of this month, uh, I'm getting a big art piece done at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the month with all your names on it, and it's going 
on the back wall. So uh, yeah, don't forget about that. So hopefully you can stick around for the next video. Make sure to subscribe and drop a like on the video if you happen to enjoy it. Uh, and yeah, I'll be sure to see you in the next video. But until then, guys, take care of yourselves and I'll see you real soon.